All right, so I'm gonna do a little um, post-mortem of the cut of a DIY book scanner on a CNC router parts uh, router. A couple things went wrong with this particular programming. Uh, one is that a lot of parts had too few tabs. Um, some of these stuck well and some of them didn't. It's hard to say exactly what threw them over, but I'll need to tab these better. Um, likewise with this inside piece, um, the outside, however, is pretty well tabbed, although I'm faintly concerned about the thickness of this edge um, right here. We'll see if that's sufficient. I know we're trying to get a 14-inch width piece of glass in there, so it might just have to be that thick. Um, you could see that this isn't a complete scanner because my test pieces cut this side out. I still felt like it was worth cutting. Um, it'll make good firewood, and, it, and I learned a lot from it. Um, likewise here, these bearing supports are a little thin. Um, you can see uh, how the thickness of the wood changes along here. Um, that's because one edge of this was lifted up higher than the other edge. That's unfortunate. Um, here again, as it lifted up, the tabs uh, didn't hold it in place. It, it was generally held in place, but not kind of the way I'd like, so that's another thing I'll need to change. Uh, here, on the leaves of the cradle, um, they cut very well, but again, insufficient tabbing. I suspect that this overcut could be reduced. It wouldn't be a huge time savings, but it would be there. These were actually slightly undercut, um, which was surprising, but I could essentially bring these dog bones out a little further. Um, here on the, on the other uh, back leaf, have some interesting um, corner irregularities that have to do with the machine setup. So I may extend this dog bone slightly to overcome that. Um, otherwise, I feel like the corners came out very well, uh, save again for here. This one is dog boned out enough, it's probably fine. Um, internally, these pieces, uh, the smooth arcs on these, probably from the DXF file, making them into tiny segments, caused the machine to jerk and also caused them to, to break their tabs. So again, heavier tabbing, removal of the arcs. I see now that this piece can come completely free and I'll have to think of a way to deal with that. I don't know if more tabs is really the answer there or if I just pocket it out or what. Likewise, this piece uh, broke free, but this piece didn't. I've got a 3D tab here and here, there, 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 and there, and they weren't sufficient, so I'll need to figure out why. Probably just a thickness issue. These pieces all came out beautifully, and I'm very happy with them. Glad I can say that in at least one place. Um, here on the front and back, uh, liner pieces. The tabbing is again a little bit insufficient, but they cut out beautifully and I'm tempted almost to leave them the way they are. Uh, pocketing could probably be reduced slightly, but came out well. Uh, just sort of seeing this as being more than a quarter inch. Walking around the entire machine, there is this big flat expanse of unused wood. It's probably smart to trim that out into a nice square in the fullness of time so I end up with a bunch of nice size scrap instead of uh, random sheets. Um, I'm liking everything I see about this front piece. I think it's good. These side pieces came out well. The tabs were sufficient. These pieces, uh, the camera triggers, I've never particularly liked and, and they've got a bit of a hairy finish here on this level. It's hard to tell if it's the wood, if it's the RPM, or if it's the bit. Uh, when Sean Wingert and I were at CNC Router Parts in Seattle, uh, we saw this happen from a crappy bit. Um, it could very well be that my bit is somewhat damaged, but it could also be that we're in between two levels in a cheap layer of wood. Um, they certainly get better where the wood is a little more dense here. I'm just not sure. I've never particularly loved these parts. I see why they're practical and why we need them, but uh, not sure. I'll just sort of keep going with those until I think of a good solution. As far as these guys, um, these also broke off inside their their mounts, despite being tabbed pretty extensively. Um, and this curved inlet here, again, caused the machine to hammer. It's an interaction between the constant velocity settings and the, um, and the type of curve and so on. I'll just need to change those to a sort of polygonal shape and let the constant velocity setting round them off. You can see the kind of hairy bottom edge of these parts. I'm pretty pleased that the machine didn't cut its own bed. I mean, it's pretty accurately set. We didn't seem to lose any Z-steps. But I'll need to think about how to treat this. Uh, I have one idea. It's pretty obvious, but I'll come to that later.
these two side pieces came out beautifully. They're held in well. Um, and that pretty much completes the whole machine. I'm gonna sneak back out here. Sorry about the shaky cam footage and the sort of stream of consciousness nature of this, but I'm just trying to get all these things in one place. So when I go back to programming, I'll be in good shape. All right, so as far as these, these pieces, they have a lot of this kind of chewed up bottom edge. And I guess I could plunge the machine a thousandth or two deeper to trim that off. I could also use a different bit. Um, but you know, the right thing to do might be just to use some sandpaper. Like this is 100 grit. And you know, a pass like that. Let's see if I can get this to focus now. Gives me a nice clean edge with really no fuss. And it might be better for me just to ship one of these with each kit uh, than to, you know, bother with a lot of um, extraneous machine settings or trying much harder on that front. And uh, again, this is the router doing all the work. Somewhere along the job, um, my Kent CNC brush foot things started coming out, so I'll need to re glue that. I also heard some interesting squealing from the Z-axis, so I'll have to see if my thrust bearings are okay. Um, in general, I'll kind of look the machine over. There's some slop here. That's probably, probably needs to be taken up. Well, the gears seem to be holding well. Likewise here, again, some, some slop, but not terrible. Certainly within machine tolerance and overall, Z-axis holding strong, so, all right, anyway.